Hello everyone. Welcome. I hope you could hear me well, everybody. Uh, I think there are more people coming. Oh, that's great. Thank you for the feedback. Fantastic. Okay, you can hear me. There are more people coming, so do take a seat. Um, they should automatically res, actually, but we will not have any seating t problems, I hope, tonight. Um, that table can hold people. Thank you, Kami. <laughs> Hi, Eugenia. Okay, I've... Mm -hmm. that's great. There are more seats on the other side of the table if you want to sit. Okay. <laughs> well, let me welcome everybody. I think I'm going to make the introductions and in the meanwhile people will be coming and they can introduce themselves in the chat box if they want. Welcome everyone and it's wonderful to be here surrounded by familiar people. Thank you for inviting me, Pionia, and thank you for accepting me here. Um, there are people from all over the world, I understand. And um, today's um, presentation is about how a teacher um, can have lessons from a skybox using Second Life immersive environments to teach English as a foreign language. But mind you, you can also teach any other language um, with uh, very similar applications. Hello, John. Welcome. Do take a seat. Hello. Okay, thank you, Maggie. Well, first, let me... Um, would you like me to start? Well, I'm Helena Galani and I've been teaching English for quite a long time. I am an MA in ELT uh, holder specialized in applied linguistics for teacher education purposes and I'm also an RSA diploma holder um, qualified with skills in teacher training and advanced ICT skills. I'm also a qualified adult education for English as a foreign language and I teach young learners at a foreign English as a foreign language school uh, in Lamia, that's in central Greece, in Europe. Also, last uh, 
January and February I was moderator for Evil Village, so um, I'm here representing my team tonight also. And um, as Camelot Award winner in 2015, I do support, full-heartedly support the use of machinima and virtual environments for teaching languages. I have participated in a lot of conferences and I always point out the importance of language teaching in virtual worlds and the interdisciplinary applications. Tonight I'm going to tell you about how I use, well, some ways and I'm going to consider some approaches of using Second Life um, for my learners. Well, let me tell you about my learners. You probably understand that there are a lot of similarities wherever you teach in the world. So my learners are assimilators and convergers. The former um, are abstract conceptualizers and the latter are abstract <laughs> conceptualizers and active experimenters. They take in information through abstract conceptualization. The second group of learners that I have and I'm sure you also recognize in your classrooms are divergers. They are concrete experiences that they take in information by observing and reflecting and they are accommodators. They are active experimenters. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. Well, I carried out a very sort of mini miniature kind of uh, survey which you can find on Survey Planet um, and you might want to ask your students to participate. Let me put it in the chat box and you can forward it to your learners. Here it is. About how useful they find lessons in Second Life. Well, um, and they full-heartedly said that they find them extremely useful, friendly, accelerating and interesting. I didn't have, I didn't receive any negative comment to this question. And then another question I asked them was, would you like to continue lessons in Second Life? And do guess what they said. Of course they said yes, a hundred percent. The next question was whether lessons in Second Life were different and why, in what ways they saw the differences between real life classes and virtual world classes and they responded that, um, well, they're, they're given opportunities for blended learning, for playing various scenar scenarios and they also said that they have the feeling that they are present in an environment where the dialogue takes place, as in real life. Some others said that they like the combination of technology and learning, and that makes lessons very effective. Um, well, let me translate, because some of them are in Greek also. One of them said that lessons are different because they help to help them talk and practice what they have learned. They combined blended learning and it's amazing. It's full of positive feedback, in fact. The next question on the survey was, um, what's the best thing about lessons in Second Life? I'm sorry about the quality of the print, but that's the best I could get. Uh, the best things about lessons in Second Life, according to my students, is the avatars and the conversations between them, effective imitation of reality and opportunity to practice participating in various dialogues, expressing their own ideas. Another uh, benefit that they recognized was getting to know each other better and hearing correct English. Someone else said that you go where you cannot in real life 
and that you learn in a very unique way. Um, they also commented on the excellent quality of the environment and that it's an easy way to understand literacies and grammar to increase critical thinking and broaden your mind. I'm sure you know all this from practice, from personal experience. Um, if on the question whether they would like to continue having lessons in second life and on a scale from 1 to 10 they gave it an 8 which is yes they said 8 out of 10 said yes they would like to continue and uh, the one who said no was because he was not technically minded he said um, I do hope this is useful. The next question was how do machinimas and lessons in Second Life help, aid your learning experience? And um, the blue ring was actually that they are helped to practice phonology, to improve their IT skills combined with the language. Others said that they gain confidence for the examination or that they feel autonomous as learners. Um, another one said actually 10%, 10.5 said that they remember vocabulary more easily and that they focus more easily so their concentration span increases. Um, cognitively someone else said and socially and some people chose that they get help for family ideas. Um, well, and I'm sure that different students, different generations would respond differently to this. Let me move on now because as a teacher I stand between teaching my students employing real-life techniques and situations in the classroom and I'm also in between teaching and testing uh, because that is the aim of most students if not all students that I have been teaching eventually they are all geared to taking examinations in the English as a foreign language so the, there is a a danger of um, falling into this trap uh, of focusing on testing more or focusing on teaching more rather than on combining these factors. Um, there is a gap in there and we are all aware of that so ideally and what I find Second Life uh, lessons in Second Life and Machinimas here help is that they bridge the gap amongst these uh, elements. Uh, they help you teach exam preparation classes with real-life linguistic scenarios and uh, this kind of merging um, really helps a lot and it speeds up the process. So um, Yes, it speeds up their process of learning because it activates different aspects of their personality. Um, well, how can I neglect this CDFOB, the unified typology of knowledge, skills and competencies? Um, well, from ancient Greece to now, um, this kind of um, target aim that every language class should have for eventually professional, for preparing people for professionally, moving from conceptual goals, skills, to operational ones, from cognitive competencies, occupationally, to functional competencies. Uh, competencies and skills from meta person from personal meta competencies to
to facilitate learning, to social competencies, attitudes and behaviors. Isn't this all familiar in here? Doesn't this happen? Um, and the, hasn't this always been the goal of human nature? Aren't we all engineered to pursue knowledge? Talking about occupational cognitive competencies. And aren't we by nature social animals, as Aristotle put it? And if I move on to the matrix of typology, again, there are different levels of it. And this can so easily be practiced here. I'm going to um, show you some tasks, some indicative tasks that uh, I get my students to do here. Like, for example, decide on the purpose of a building that I have just raised or I have included in my holodeck and find the objects to decorate the building for the purposes. And during this kind of exchange, students um, discuss, they um, sorry, they try to reach a consensus, they become creative, they interact between them most important of all, they collaborate. And the funny thing is that they avoid using their mother tongue because they know they are more aware of the target that they have, which is communication in a foreign language. Mm, another task which really is very <laughs> purposeful for them is, uh, which can have variations depending on their occupation and age is find the best solution for a candidate or for an employee. I'm going to show you in a few minutes some scenes in the holodeck where we have been uh, acting out scenarios to practice language or to flip the classroom and introduce the next aims of the next uh, lesson. Um, I'm going to read some more tasks, just in case you can't see them clearly. Uh, improvise, collaborate, to reach a consensus. And um, although some of them are loners, as individuals and some workers, to carry out the tasks here, they do work together harmoniously, keeping the target, the aim, in the back of their minds. Also, they like brainstorming the dialogue and how, like for example, how do you treat the customer? Or um, oh, the other day we had a very nice um, role play um, at an office, which I'm going to show you in a while. And the scenario was um, arrange, a get, uh, arrange a professional meeting with the manager of the company who was not there, so they had to improvise and activate recently taught language. Um, send your employer a note card in Second Life asking him or her to extend the project deadline. So they acquire very useful professional skills or they imitate future life situations, professionally speaking and they prepare in the target language. Um, like another task that uh, they have carried out is respond to the customer and insert the note card into an object or negotiate the new terms of your contract or even fly your Lepidopteron to the end of the island and find a hidden message. Um, there are a lot of um, affordances and a lot of possibilities here. Um, yes, trying to persuade someone um, to buy new equipment or complaining about faulty equipment at a shop. 
Well, okay, I've put down okay, three scenarios here to show you um, how exams can have a positive backwash effect in the classroom. Um, And um, let's take the first one, which uh, we act out at the market, which is a holodeck scene that I'm going to raise in a minute for you. The holodeck is just above our head, so it doesn't disturb our little company here. The first scenario is you are an IT at an IT shop, an information technology shop, and you want to complain about a laptop you recently purchased improvise the situation. In fact, it was the first time for them that they had to complain and um, they had to brainstorm the language. Um, let me help you with the seating. Sorry about that. Okay. They had to improvise with the language to brainstorm. Um, I think we should do that. I would really like you to see um, the marketplace, as I call it. I'm going to raise the scene. Uh, it's actually an empty shop, and students. And students provide with the, they find the objects or they ask me to find the objects before the lesson. And um, we go in there and we act out the dialogues beforehand. Um, I don't know if you can all just pull up to the sky box. It's just a, I mean, um, <laughs> it's just a usual scene. Uh, it's not been decorated for the purposes I told you because I want my students to describe the, the setup, the environment for me, to go through every detail, to be able to predict any vocabulary, any phrase, any collocation and idiom they may have to use in their examination. And mind you, most exams are informed in terms of uh, acting out real-life scenarios. So e contemporary examination processes go beyond the act of simply describing photographs or talking about yourself. Uh, they move on to role plays and scenario based exchanges and that would have to activate different genres, different sorry, registers and different styles also. Um, End simulation. The second scenario at the railway station while waiting at the railway station you run into an old friend whom you don't recognize because you haven't met for a long time. Act out, improvise the situation and find out how you have known each other. You might want to have a look at this scene. Some of you have seen it during the Evil Village sessions. Um, you, well, the railway station is right above your heads. And I don't know, I can leave the holodeck here. It's always here on the skybox and you can always res it and uh, have a look at the scenes. Um, this scenario usually takes place in the waiting room at the railway station with people opening the doors and um, people opening the doors and um, 
pulling their suitcases, their second life suitcases, and having all kinds of... Um, you can hear? Okay, that's great. Um, Laura, you may have to log out and come in again. Yeah. Okay, so they, um, apart from language that they're involved in, they have to juggle around with different technology skills. And um, this is the funny thing. They, in the beginning, they believe that this is um, a hinge, this is like a trap, or it's a problem, the lesson may be problematic, but then gradually they realize that um, through all this experimentation and the mistakes or trying out different buttons in Second Life, they learn new vocabulary, they learn technology skills also, and they are more technologically informed in the end. Okay, mm, my favorite scenario and scene, I've called it uh, Los Angeles office. Um, again, here it is. Mm. I hope it all goes well and we don't have things falling on our heads. <laughs> oh, we have. I'm sorry about that. Work accidents do happen. <laughs> oh. Well, the basic part remains. Oh, sorry, Eugenia. I've got a first aid kit somewhere. Oh, okay, I'll do the mopping around later on, not now, not now, uh, we're busy now, we've got work to do, so, okay, so, uh, you. this is the scenario, you've booked an appointment with a potential employer, <laughs> but he's late, the employer is late, so while waiting in that office which you can see just above you if you open the door you decide to call your present employer to say you will be late at the office find the telephone booth that involves a little bit of moving around and act out the situation until the potential employer arrives well you might want to act out one of these uh, scenarios at the end if you find them funny uh, or interesting and if you want to be in your uh, <laughs> in your students shoes and see how they feel when they have to go outside the door and turn to the right and avoid bumping into the bougainvillier and all sorts of things until they find the booth the telephone booth Yes, it's always nice to be considerate and think ahead before you decide your lesson aims what kind of psychomotor skills you are going to promote to help your students promote perception for example um, maybe this is done a little bit more rarely in classrooms um, in terms of cognitive skills, mental skills, knowledge, perhaps a little bit more of evaluation is missing in classrooms. And in terms of affective skills, um, valuing and responding needs a little bit more emphasis. Okay, I'm sure you know this. Um, End simulation. The next uh, example 
for perceiving, evaluating and responding is a decision-making board game that you have all seen in the Evil Village sessions. Let me press this scene, which again is going to be just above your head. And I hope the game's pieces and everything are in place. Okay, it all works. Good. It's nice to activate a little bit of compassion in students, even that, uh, it, because this is not possible in uh, a physical classroom. Um, activating behavioral and personal real life skills, like, for example, taking initiative and responsibility and teaching them a little bit of commitment. Um, or mentoring, a little bit more of reasoning and problem solving. You probably remember the decision making strategies board game, a communication game, uh, which involves them into conversation um, about how they react in case their neighbor um, tr climbs up a ladder. The neighbor can be an old man or a young child or a frail woman. Um, you can uh, make it a little bit dramatic every time. So there okay. seems to be some risk involved as the ladder is not very well supported. Yes, and the student has to click on the surface, different areas of the surface to listen to possible um, ways of reacting. Yes, thank you. Thank you for typing this in, Pionia. Yeah, uh, on clicking the red button, they get the instructions and the objective of the game. On clicking the numbered boxes, the surfaces with the numbers, uh, they can hear as many times as they want. They can hear the phrase, actually, the possible options that they have. How would they react? It's not that they use their conditional sentences. It's not that they use their modal verbs for this particular exercise or activity, task, game, whatever word you want to choose for that. But it's that uh, they activate social skills and uh, behavioral personal skills, technical skills also, soft method skills, and um, that's not always easy to do in a physical classroom. Well, um, there are a lot of other examples that you can find in the holodeck scenes just above us. And please feel free, I can show you around, feel free to have a look. Um, this is the bibliography that um, I consulted for today and some of my presentations which you can find online. Thank you very much for coming here. But I would really like to show you around my holodeck scene, so uh, don't hesitate to just jump up and teleport just above us to the surface where the games are at the moment. So you can stand up if you want and simply pull your mouse and teleport just above us, yes. Oh, let me teleport you.
Okay. Are we all on the games platform? Uh, Mary Free, hold on. I'm going to teleport you. Okay. Please accept the teleport. Is that okay? A phrase, I've just sent you a teleport. You can come. Okay. Yeah? Mary Free? Not yet? Okay, I'll try again. Okay, here's the teleport offer. Push the ladder yeah? to show the neighbor that he or she has not positioned it correctly. Laura, we're just above you. I'm going to teleport you. There you go. And again, Laura, this is for you. Okay, everyone. So you can look around, you can click on surfaces and see how things work. Um, what I like doing is, after they have prepared with their conversations and everything, we we take footage, we make a machinima of the conversations, of the scenarios, and then they watch it and they, that's the best way of gaining feedback for them, how to self-correct their mistakes or peer-correct mistakes. Um, the game, which is with the games pieces, <coughs> the board, uh, let me see, here, this one, which looks like a domino game, a chess game, is based on a literature book, um, actually two literature books. If you click on it, you will be able to receive um, a note card with instructions and how the game is placed. Is played, sorry. It's based on Hobson's Choice and Brick Lane, which are literature books European baccalaureate students are tested on, are assessed on for university entrance examinations. So you can insert uh, note cards and sounds and uh, scripts with which they, uh, with which students sort of interact and collect their information, you know, to carry out the dialogue and the scenarios. Um, Would you like to ask me any questions? Would you like me to raise another scene? Uh, we may have to go back to the lower floor, as I call it. Let's go back to the previous level, because otherwise you're going to fall if I clear the scene. Unless you don't mind falling.
Uh, Laura, which game? We won't fall far. <laughs> okay, if you can hold then. Uh, the literature game. Okay, Laura, the literature game. Why don't you click on the squares? For every square, you receive a question that you've got to answer within one minute. So you set your students a time limit for that. And the objective of the game is to reach the opposite side of the board. Yeah? For every correct answer also, they've got to move your games piece one square forward or sideways. All these games activate their skills and um, uh, let's take for example this one here which says agreeing and disagreeing. Again if you click on it you receive useful expressions how to agree and disagree. And on the mind map they're given some ideas about supporting um, the use of television, the, the pros and cons of watching television. Also, they're given useful expressions to interrupt, to ask for clarification. And uh, first we discuss, they have a kind of uh, agreement or disagreement and that can lead to, to writing an essay. Um, an argumentative essay. The excuses game that you can see here, which we've also presented <laughs> in uh, Evil Village. Again, by clicking on the rods on the top, they receive expressions, they can hear expressions. And that's good for drilling. Would you mind terribly if... I never meant to cause you any trouble, but... I don't mean to inconvenience you, but... In pairs, act out role plays. Choose three situations of the same color. I didn't yes. realize it would be so terribly wrong. Okay. Um, there's a lot you can see here, but you might want us to visit the, my favorite, which is um, Los Angeles scene, the Los Angeles scene, the office. How about flying? I don't want you to fall. So how about clicking the fly button? saying anything. It's none of your business and your neighbor is an adult. Please click the fly button. I don't want you to fall. No accidents. Okay, everybody's in the air. Let's clear. Great. Okay, we can go back down. Great. Oh no, sorry, ladies, are you okay? Technically, it's quite advanced, so students would have to be very dexterous to be able to move around because it's a... Ooh. Well, that always happens, it seems. Uh, have a look at the scene just above you.
sorry, Pionia. <laughs> okay. Let's come and have a look. Um, I can teleport those who don't know <laughs> pool rooms. I can teleport those who can't go just above us again as we did before. Well, that's second life for you. All nice things happen here. We're sorry. Okay, so let's now. go Would you and try your call again later. Have We're a look. Sorry. All circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again? Have a look later. around. I'm Find going to teleport the rest of you. John, here you are, here's the teleport. And Lillian, I'm sending you teleport. Laura? Isn't it nice? Yes, I love it too. The conversations we've had in here are incredible. <laughs> yes, it would be nice. Anybody who's not upstairs, a phrase, let me send you a teleport. Please accept this teleport and you will find yourself outside the office. John and Laura, the same to you too. Jens, here's a teleport for you. Please take it. And John, this is for you. Principal, sounds nice. John, can you accept the teleport of? Here you are. Yeah. 
Yes, um, I, I just wanted to thank you. Thank you so much, Maggie. Wonderful. I'm glad you like it. There, there's a lot you can do here with students. I mean, there are so many different types of um, uh, scenarios you can act out, different situations. Uh, thank you, Pionia. Thank you so much. If you think you've explored enough, we can go back down and you can ask me any questions you want. Unless you want to stay on, I can leave the scene here and the rest of us can go down again. But I, I wouldn't like it to fall. <laughs> so do fly. Press the fly button first. And then okay thanks for coming thank you uh, okay then so do feel free ask me any questions I would like to keep you much longer I know that uh, for some of you the day is starting now so you may be busy <coughs> But do feel free to ask me whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> so I think sky boxes and holodecks are a very good solution for a teacher who can't afford to have a whole island to themselves. So, uh, and um, it's very nice. Yes, yes, Fidget, I do. Uh, you you purchase the holodeck and then you store the scenes in it. You can, as we say, you can build them and then you pack them. You're welcome. Anybody else would like to ask any questions? Yeah. 
Yes, um, I'm a holo. I'm a, uh, Jens, that's a good question. Thank you for asking it. I'm an education resident, which means that um, Heike Philp and uh, Randall Sadler are co-owners of the island and we do our own little research here with a lot of other um, very helpful educators. Um, so if you just go below this sky box you will be able to walk around and see how much has been done. Uh, there are a lot of helpful educators that can help you with um, you know how you can move around how you can build occasionally we have sessions or uh, workshops learning how to move around in second life how to get by in second life and um, you can find all this information so useful Yes, Pionia is also on Education Island and Jens and uh, oh gosh, a lot of people. I'm afraid I'm going to forget a lot of them. Um, if you want to find more about lessons in Second Life, you can have a look at Evil Village Week. Uh, Evil Village, I must have it here amongst my presentations. Uh, no, I'm going to type in the address for I can send you, Fidget, I can send you the presentation, uh, but please spare with me a moment. I'm multitasking again, so <laughs> I've got to find the Evil Village session on which you can find a lot of information. I'll try and send it to you, otherwise I can unlock it and make it available on my Agogipedia site, which is www. I can make them available there. Yes, Maggie, I'm going to do that, certainly. I'm going to send you the slides, sure. Okay. Oh, I can't see John. Poor John, where is he? John, if you click, left click on the ground, on the floor. Any other questions, anybody? Thank you too, Maggie. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, Jens. Thanks for coming. It was nice having you here today. Thank you.